Hi folks, I'm Glyn Dewis and welcome to episode one of my video podcast. Okay, so to kick things off, I wanna start with a really cool lighting effect. And it's one that I would normally have done in Photoshop. But I wanna show you this effect in Lightroom, how we can now do this in Lightroom and also Camera Raw. First of all, though, let me show you the effect and how I used to do it up until now using Photoshop. Now I'm in Photoshop CS6. So I've got a picture here that I call Dark Angel. And this is a, a composite picture of model Jesse, who we photographed out in uh, Germany. And the background and the floor is actually one shot in itself. And that's just a shot that I took when I was walking around on a nice day during looking around at uh, Heidelberg Castle. But the lighting effect I want to do here is, do you know those kind of... Uh, torches that they used to have in the old days where it was like a stick with the, the the fire at the end of it i think they call them torches but i want to kind of give the impression that one of those is in the top right hand corner of our picture so it'd be nice and warm in the top right hand corner and then getting sort of cooler as the light goes further down towards the floor now the way i used to do that was by going to the layer menu and going new fill layer and choosing gradient and from there i'd just type in something like light and we've got to change the mode here. I'm going to change the mode to soft light and click OK. Now, when we do that, the gradient fill dialog box comes up here. And I'm just going to click on the gradient there to choose one that will be suitable. And to be honest with you, it doesn't really matter which one I choose because I can change the colors. But to make thing easy, things easy, I'm going to choose this one here, this kind of like a purple and orange gradient just here. And you can see kind of the effect happening already on the picture. But I want to change the color in this left hand corner here so I'm going to click on this little icon click on the color picker and I'll just choose something that's going to give me the impression of being a cool blue and you can see as I'm doing that now that color is reflected in the bottom half of my picture so I'll click OK and we'll click OK there now what I can do is with gradient fill dialog box dialog box even I've got the angle and I can change that to the direction I want the gradient to come in so I want it to come in from the top left or top right even I can even put my cursor on top of the picture and drag it up and down to change where I want that picture to be or so that gradient to be so that gives the impression there of having this warm light glow coming down from the top right and a cooler darker kind of feel to the bottom left of the picture. So how would I now do that in Lightroom? Well, let's jump over to Lightroom 5. And in Lightroom 5, we've got lots and lots of adjustments we can make now. And one of them is using the graduated filter. So I'm gonna to go to my develop module, and in the top here, I'm gonna choose my graduated filter. And when we do that, we have the color down at the bottom. And I'm just gonna click on that and choose a really warm orange kind of color. Now, just so you know that when you're in this little dialog box here, at the very, very top is where the color is most saturated. As you drag it down, it becomes less saturated, not so bright and really kind of goes to white, to be honest with you, it goes to nothing. So I'm gonna click this right at the top, a very nice warm orange. And then I'm gonna click into my picture and click and drag this gradient down coming just over halfway, I reckon, somewhere like that will be fine. And the great thing is now that when I've applied that gradient, over in the right hand side now in my develop module, I can make use of things like saturation. So I can really kind of pump up the saturation in that orange there so it gets even warmer, which is quite good. And I could maybe even add clarity, exposure, and so on and so forth. But I'm just gonna stick with the saturation for now. But I also wanna add this kind of blue, this cooler part in the bottom left. So I'm just gonna click on new. I'll then click in the color and now I'll choose a cooler blue color. And we'll go for something like, something like that will be fine. Click in my picture and drag up something like so. Now when I've got this graduated filter, I can obviously move my cursor around within this to move it around. If I put my cursor over the middle, I can drag it so to position the gradient where I want it. I can even put my cursor over one of the actual outer bars here to reduce the size of that gradient. And if I wanted to, I can click on the middle bar and you'll see you get two arrows where I can change the angle of it, something like that. But I'll just drag that down just a little bit. But what I like about doing it in Lightroom is that now that I've applied this warm and cool gradient here, I can also click back on the color and move around within this color picker here. And you can see the actual color changing in real time within my picture. And I really quite like that. So that's quite flexible. So that's how we can do it in Lightroom. 
but also we can do it now in Photoshop CC. So let's jump over to Photoshop CC to see one method, one extra method of how we can do this. And this is really, really flexible way of working because now we can make use of smart filters. So what I'm gonna do is I've got my picture open here, my dark angel picture and I'm going to filter and convert for smart filters. So this now allows me to be a lot more flexible with my editing so that I can come back later on and make changes. And that's a really, really good way to work. And funnily enough, that's probably why they call it smart, smart filters. Um, but now what I'm going to do then, now that we're in here, I'm going to go to Camera Raw. So filter, Camera Raw filter. Now this is brand new to Photoshop CC. Uh, to the Creative Cloud. So I'm going to click on Camera Raw Filter, and this is now going to take my picture over into the Camera Raw dialog. And this is this is going to be a huge thing now within our editing. To be able to go back into the Camera Raw Filter at any stage is going to be a big, big thing for us, I think, with the retouching now. And it's certainly changing the way that my workflow is now developing. But now that I'm in the Camera Raw Filter, again, like we did in Lightroom, I can go to my graduated filter, I can choose a color here. Again, we'll go for this nice warm orange color and we'll click OK. And I can drag my gradient down. So I've got that nice warm color in the top right hand corner. I can click New, choose a blue color here so it's nice and cool. Click OK and drag from the bottom left and drag up. So same kind of effect. And again, I can make use of the saturation. Let's just hide the overlay there. So I can make use of the saturation now to really pump up those colors. But here's the thing, once I've clicked OK, I then go back into Photoshop and carry on doing my retouching. But because this has now been applied as a smart filter, I can just double click on it in the layers over here to go back into Camera Raw to make any adjustments that I wanna do. So maybe I wanna make a few changes to this one here. I don't want it to come down quite so far. And we don't want this to become quite so far, a bit of an angle there maybe, something like that. And I might want to just change how far this blue one comes up. I might even want to change the color as well. So you can see that, again, dragging around there, you see the color changing on the fly and clicking OK. So that's how we can apply this effect that I use on a lot of pictures when I'm kind of making it look as if somebody's either stood under, like in this picture here, one of those torches with the fire on. It might be a good effect to use when somebody stood under a street light as well, if you're doing a composite where somebody's in a street. Very, very cool technique, very simple, but there's just a few ways of, of applying it. Now, one extra little thing. If you're not on the Creative Cloud, you've not got Photoshop CC or anything like that at all, you can still do this effect if you've got Photoshop CS6. What you'll need to do, though, is go over to Russell Brown's website, which is russellbrown.com, and in the section here, you'll see Dr. Brown's scripts. And if you click on that, you'll go to the scripts, scroll down, and then eventually you'll come across a script which is called Edit Layers in Adobe Camera Raw. But it says like here, for CS6 only. So just have a, have a look at that there. It does have its limitations. It's not quite as advanced as what's now in the CC and the Creative Cloud, where you can't really apply this now on a, on a layer that's got a layer mask or any transparency, but it is a pretty damn good workaround, and I've used that a lot up until this point. So there you go, that's one cool effect, taking it from what used to be done in Photoshop, now in Lightroom. Next thing up, I've got a quick Photoshop photography uh, tip for you to show you how I actually do photography when I'm actually taking pictures of my backgrounds to go in a composite. Hi folks, Glyn Jewish here. Now while we're out, I just thought it'd be handy to record a quick tutorial for one of the questions I get asked about a lot, and that's to do with perspective when I'm doing a composite. How do I get the floor, the angle of the floor, to match the angle that the person was photographed in the studio so the two matched up? Now this is really, really simple. What I don't do, I don't take measurements, I don't write things down or anything like that. All I do is I remember that when I am in the studio, generally when I'm photographing somebody full length, I tend to go down to kind of like down to one knee and I'm using my 70-200, which is my favorite lens, and I kind of focus and I take a shot from this kind of angle. So it's pretty simple. So when I'm out and about and I'm collecting the floors for the pictures that I'm gonna be building, I take the picture in exactly the same way. So I come out with my 70 to 200, I go down to one knee, I choose the track, and this track here is the one that I was using, uh, you actually see it on the screen now, it's the soldier picture, the Afghanistan scene. That was taken exactly in the same place here. Grass has grown a bit because we've had a lot of water, a lot of rain, a lot of sun, so obviously things have changed. But all I did, down on one knee, get the camera up, 70 to 200, 
And what I'm doing is I'm using the same, uh, same F number as what I did in the studio, F8, F11. And the reason for that is so that the person I'm photographing is in focus from the tip of their nose, way, way behind them. So then I can put a scene in and it looks realistic, kind of. So I'm gonna photograph them, I'm say F11. I'll then focus on a point which is about as far away as what the model was in the studio down the track here. So he was maybe, I don't know, 12 foot away from me. So I'll focus on a point on the floor 12 foot ahead of me. I'll then compose it so that I'm at the same angle as when I took the shot. Then I'll take a couple of shots. So clickety-click. And that's basically it. The angle's then gonna be the same. The photograph in the studio will then match up and everything works seamlessly. So nothing technical there, nothing written down, nice and simple. Best way to work it, don't overcomplicate things. Hope that's handy. Back to me in the studio. Okay, so to wrap things up for this first episode, I wanna just finish off with a retouching technique that I use quite a lot when I'm doing composite images. And it's a technique that allows us to match the color between the person we photographed in the studio and the background that we put them in. A lot of times we can kind of look at our pictures when we're working through them, when we maybe first start off doing all this compositing work and we just can't seem to get the color of the person and the background matching so that it actually does look like they're photographed in that particular scene. So this is a very, very quick way of doing it. But I mean, this isn't the only way of doing it. Photoshop being such a massive program, there are so many ways we can do this, making all kinds of color adjustments, using all the adjustment layers that we've got available to us. But this is a quick, almost down and dirty way of actually applying it to our pictures. And it's one that I tend to use, I don't know, maybe 99% of the time, because it is so quick and easy. So we're gonna do it on this picture here of Dave. This is my mate Dave Clayton. It's a, a picture that we did as like a bit of an homage to our favorite program, Dexter. I absolutely love Dexter. And this is the out, this is the uh, final image, not the outer camera. This is the final picture when we've had all the, uh, the retouching and lighting effects and all that kind of stuff added to it. But here is a, a part way through the retouch here. Now, this is where I've done a little bit of retouching on Dave and I've just added in the background behind him. So you can see that there's Dave on the gray there that we photographed against there, this gray seamless. And I've just done a very, very quick selection and I've put in the background behind him. But you can see, if I just zoom in there, the difference in the kind of temperature really between the background and him. It clearly looks like he wasn't there. He's way too warm for this background. So here's how we can make it look a little bit more realistic, if <laughs> that's the right word to use for this picture. But you know, make it look as if he actually is in there anyway by calling him down. Now, all I'm going to do, I'm going to get a copy. This is the actual background that I used that I put in behind him. And I'm going to use another copy of that. So I'm going to get my move tool, click and drag this background texture, if you like, to the top of my layer stack. I'm going to get free transform and just stretch it out so it fills the whole picture like so. Now, I'm now going to apply a filter to it. And ordinarily, when we apply filters nowadays, we would try to use them as smart filters because that allows us to go back in and make adjustments later on. It's a very, very flexible and smart way to work. But with this one, there is no point because there are no adjustments that we can make. It just does one thing. And the filter we're going to use is this one, filter, blur, and average. And basically what that does, you'll probably see that now on the screen. What it does, it takes the layer that you're working on, Photoshop looks at it and mashes it all up to get one consistent color across the whole layer. So the color you're looking at now is that peeling paint texture been completely mullered and made into one average color. But now what we can do is we can apply this color onto Dave to help him to match in with his background. And here's how we can do that. Well, the first thing we do is in the layers panel, we're gonna change the blend mode of this average blur color layer from normal to color, because that's all we want is the color. But you can see at the moment that that color has been applied to everything, the background and to Dave. We only want it onto Dave. Now, what I could do is now add a black layer mask and just paint in white to bring the color only onto Dave. But I've already got a layer mask here where I cut Dave out of the background already, so I can make use of that already. It's just working smart. So I'm gonna get my option key or my alt key, depending on what you're working on. I'm gonna hold it down and click on that layer mask and then drag it above. And what that does, it creates a copy. But the thing is at the moment, that layer mask is only allowing the color to appear on the background because the layer mask, there's white and there's black. 
Where it's white is where it's showing the color, where it's black is where it's hiding it. And we don't want it on the background, we want it to appear onto Dave. So all I need to do now is invert the layer mask. So what's white becomes black, and what's black becomes white. And I can do that by going to Image, Adjustments, and Invert. So now we can see that that average blur color is applied to Dave. Obviously way too much at the minute, but because it's on its own layer, we can take the opacity way down to something around about maybe 30 for this picture to help him kind of blend in. And this is all personal taste here, but I think for this one, 30 works well, and it gives a good example of the kind of thing we're trying to show you. So if I now zoom in, if we look at this, turn it off, you can see that Dave is really, really warm, but but just doing that quick effect where we do the average blur and putting it onto Dave's skin at 30%, look at the difference that makes. That's off, that's on, that's off, that's on. It kind of helps him a lot more now to blend in with that background. And like I say, that's something that I do generally on probably 99% of all the composites I do when I'm trying to match somebody in with their background. Okay, so thanks for tuning in to episode one of our video podcast. Now obviously this being the first one, it's gonna develop over time with lots of other different bits of content. We're gonna keep it to around about the 10 or 15 minute mark, but if there's any tips, tricks, or techniques Photoshop or photography related that you'd like to see, just leave a comment in the comment section below just underneath here. But also maybe we could talk about recommending portfolios to check out as well or websites. I'm all for that. So if you'd like to see your portfolio recommended on here, maybe your 500px site, again, leave the details in the comment section below here. But again, thanks for uh, tuning in guys. Any questions, email me, glynn at glynnjewish.com and I'll see you for episode two.